mg2 plus ion will have greater charge density and since it has greater charge density it will polarize the anion more than the ca2 plus ion so if we have mg2 plus over here this is the positive ion i'm just writing plus to represent mg2 plus this will polarize the ion something like this whereas the ca2 plus ion which is the which is bigger and it also has the same charge let me let me also write 2 plus and 2 plus over here it will slightly polarize the ion slighter than uh, than the mg2 plus ion because the charge density on the ca2 plus ion is lower so actually the I, the bond will be stronger in the case of cao because it is polarizing the anion less than the mg2 plus ion and since it is polarizing the anion less than the mg2 plus ion cao will be more thermally stable than mgo and what we mean by this is that ca cao will decompose at a greater temperature compared to mgo and therefore uh, we can reduce the extent of thermal thermal stability because um CaO is more thermally stable than MgO because since the uh, Ca2 plus ion has greater charge density it will polarize the anion less than the Mg2 plus ion will polarize the anion so what we need to know is that we will be asked questions about group 2 so we were just talking about group 2 we go from Mg then to Ca and then further so as we go down group 2 uh, group 2 their compounds become more thermally stable This is because down the group the radii of the cations increase while their ionic charge remains the same therefore the charge density decreases down the group as we just saw as a result the anion is polarized to a lesser extent as we go down the group and hence the ionic bonds are stronger and since the ionic bonds are stronger as we go down the group the compounds of group 2 are more thermally stable so if you write this answer as it is then you will get 3 or 4 marks because this question always comes for for 3 or 4 marks and uh, you can easily score 3 or 4 marks by writing this exact statement in your answer now we have done thermal stability and this is our final topic uh, which is the relation between lattice enthalpy enthalpy of hydration and enthalpy of solution so let's take the example of nacl again so we have na plus gas plus cl negative gas giving me nacl solid this is the lattice energy this change is called lattice energy then we have when we dissolve these two then we will have ns na plus aqueous plus the negative aqueous so this will be the this will be enthalpy change of hydration it will be the sum of the enthalpy changes of hydration of na plus ions and cl negative ions because both are being dissolved but i'm just writing delta h not hide over here for enthalpy change of hydration but this is actually the sum of the enthalpy change of hydration of na plus and the enthalpy change of hydration of cl negative or we can dissolve any cl solid directly to get the same we can get na plus aqueous so just let me just correct this and write all of these correctly we have na plus aqueous this is the enthalpy change of solution of sodium chloride because that's the definition when an, when one mole of an ionic sol the solid is dissolved in in enough water to form an infinitely dilute solution so now we again have a case of direct and indirect routes so if we start with these if we start with the gaseous ions and we go to the aqueous ions then this is one direct route so i'll write delta h not i this is one direct route or i first go from the gaseous ions to the ionic solid which is the that which is the lattice energy and then i go to the aqueous ions which is the enthalpy of solution so this is the indirect route but we know that as hess law states the total energy change will remain the same so i can say delta s not hide is equal to le plus 
delta is not solved. 